With the rear reinforcement for the back stays of the cage completed in the last video, I was able to move on to the front legs of the cage, but not till after a little bit of more inspiration at the Killarney Historic Rally 2022. This Skoda Estelle is running in a similar engine capacity class to what the cadet will be eligible for, but the slightly more modern one. It'll be great if some of the cadet's contemporary rivals are out rallying when I finally do get the car out. Back in the garage again, I could now line up that whole rear section on the mid and rear reinforcing plates. As usual, slotting a bolt into each of the footings so that the front legs will sit as they will when it's all bolted in. With that all in position, I'd need to actually tighten up the the front legs of the cage as they go out from the, the B pillar hoop. A glance to make sure both sides are in position. Again, very handy that the, the back windows are out for getting in at these. It's a real pain doing this uh, when the glass is there. You might find a pun there if you're looking hard. I have deliberated on how to do these front legs in my mind probably for the last one to two years, uh, balancing up the different regulations and requirements, uh, etc. So what I've decided to do um, is put the two bolts up just inside the sill. This is very similar to the way they are in the Cinquecento that I used to race um, with a homologated bolt in cage. When I did this to another cadet before, I actually cut the sill open and put the reinforcing plate inside. Um, but it really only makes a couple of centimeters difference to bring it in here. The car that this cage actually came out originally <laughs> had um, a box section with like a, like a H shape on its side um, with the, the footing of that cage bolted into it and another pair of bolts bolting through the floor directly below them. Another way to do it would be to sleeve it uh, and put a long bolt in, but the the floor isn't level, so you, you wouldn't be, your bolt could end up twisting, so you could end up weakening a long bolt. So I've decided to um, go for bolting through my plate up high and um, putting another two bolts through the floor separately and um, it's a, a, a mix of a couple of the designs that are proposed in the, the FIA book and this is an interpretation so I can't tell you 100% that this is correct but as far as I can see this is the best uh, compromise I can do and I have seen very similar done um, in homologated cages elsewhere. The second pair of bolts through the floor are not actually relevant to the FIA um, Appendix K requirement. These are for the Motorsport Ireland requirement of a reinforcing below the floor. And this is the best way I can see to extend the attachment down as far as the floor to a plate that's 1.5 times the size of the plate at the end of the front roll cage leg. From the FIA point of view, the surface area of these reinforcings will uh, greatly exceed the 120 centimeters squared surface area that they require. There's been some flash rusting since I initially cleaned off this section, and now I know exactly where I'm going to be attaching to. Keeping it clean will improve the quality of the welds. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of the weld through primer on these on the surface that's going to meet the sill and I'll also paint the sill and take a break while that dries off. Okay, I'm back and the paint has dried on those. And now I'm putting the cage back into position again. 
because I'm going to get a couple of welds on these with the leg in place. So the little plate that I made is a little bit larger than the end of the cage leg. Um, it's six centimeters by 12 and the cage is five by 10 centimeters. That just gives a bit of space for the, the welding around the edge. Bolting it in so it sits at the level it needs to be. I'm glad I decided not to cut into the, the sill. Although you'd, you'd build up the, the strength again, it's just there's just something wrong with cutting it. <laughs> As I'm doing so much welding in the garage at the moment, I thought maybe it might be time to give this a more permanent installation. It's a fire safety stick. You can get them from efox.ie uh, and um, it's a good idea to have them in your garage or in your precious car. I um, when I first got my like uh, one of my old cadets on the road, I, I kind of made a declaration as a as still a teenager at the time. And one of the rules was if you had Recaro seats, you had to have an extinguisher in the car. I put it here so I'd already be going in the right direction towards the door. I do keep um, a garden hose primed and ready to go just outside the door. Um, wouldn't be ideal on an electrical fire, but. Um, if the, the welder was pulled back from the car and the some underseal or something like that was underway, um, it would uh, you'd be able to dose it pretty quickly because um, it'd be quite hard to put out fires inside sills and things like that. So um, plenty of water on hand, and uh, actually this garage has a drain in the middle as well. It was designed for people to to come in with a car every day uh, back when people did that, and uh, could the the rain could drain off it. If you read up about these online, um, they are small but apparently very, very effective. And I have read the instructions on how to use it and anything like this that you install, I suggest you do the same. On with the welding. I'll do the short side of each of these plates, that's where it sits on top of the sill. I couldn't extend this plate back all the way into the, the join in the sills because there's actually a, a depression along the back where some of the wiring would run. So again, that didn't lend itself to a neat uh, job with the, um, the bolt going into the sill. I mean, it would, you could um, press the depression out of the floor, but to get the best weld, and you, you needed it in a step anyway to get a weld along the back. So um, I think this is a, a good way to do it. To get a nice long continuous weld along the back, I'm moving the, the legs out of the way again. Okay, so I'm judging now where the the floor plate needs to go in relation to the top one. Checking my measurements, seeing how far into the car it'll go, and then applying that to my steel plate. And I'm working out a bit of a jigsaw here to use up the steel as efficiently as possible. These plates are four by 20 centimeters. Um, so there's, there's the top one, which will be welded to the, the higher section. And then there's the under the floor plate, which will match in this case. You'll see why I made it as narrow as four centimeters, particularly when you see the left hand side of the car's floor underneath. Um, and the two sides are actually quite different underneath. Um, so this was a compromise that would match both sides because I wanted to look fairly uniform and tidy. I've welded through primer on all my joining surfaces and now I can mark up these plates and find the centers to put the, the bolts which are going to go through my floor in them. Pilot hole first, and then drill the larger hole for the M10 bolts to go through. The bench drill making light work of this repetitive job again. Back to the car now, and I need to mark the floor 
and drill the holes through that with the hand drill. Same job on both sides. And I'll drill that in two stages as well, even though it's pretty light work. You can see how much the floor rises up there over the distance of this fitting. So making the two surfaces that are fixed and then I'll make the, the plates um, to join them all up later when everything is sitting the way it wants to. Now I need to apply that bolt pattern to the underfloor plate. So I'll find its position. There is a possibility that this is pushed in a little bit that's why I didn't just copy the top piece the the join in the sill to the floor here um, could be pushing it in a little bit so maybe they're not totally centered so again that's why I'm I'm doing the marking in place on both sides it actually worked out pretty much bang on in the centers, which is good because that's the, the strongest place. So bolting the top and bottom plates together before the final welding will clamp the floor nice and flat between them and it'll find its level so that it fits well with the, the plates that I'll make, especially for it, to box it in. I liked having the bolts at either end of the plate instead of a big square one because again the if they were to come in they would have been a bit out of line from the center of the stresses on this and they'd also encroach further into the the foot well this is the left hand side of the floor and you can see how much narrower the channel i'm trying to fit the plate into so that's what to find the size for, uh, for both sides the plate that's welded to the roll cage leg is 5 by 10 which is a 50 centimeter squared surface area and this plate that I'm putting on the floor and under the floor is a total area of 80 centimeters squared the 4 by 20 I beat the floor a little bit just to make it tight at the corners and I'm expecting to do the same on this side tightening it in now so that it pulls itself into the form of the floor or more the floor pulls into the form of the strong plates cleaning everything off now before I do my welding last time I'm going to be able to clean in there and now what I'm doing is there is still a little bit of a groove here for the wiring there must have been a junction here or something I'm not quite sure why there is a dip but the wiring will not be going through here because it would be outside the cage the wiring has to run inside the cage but um, I'm welding a row in that groove and then I'll do a continuous run across the top of that weld. The weld was actually for the ends of the floor plate and now I'm going to take off the underneath reinforcing so that it doesn't get um, welded on by any penetration through the floor of the weld. Wouldn't really matter um, if they were actually fixed to the floor. Um, but I haven't treated them yet and I suppose maybe because these are outside 
and I could theoretically replace them in the future easily if they became weathered. So those are my long wells in. They got a little bit messy because you're interfacing between 3 mil plate and very thin floor, but not too bad. But I've got a lot of burnt sealant, so I'm going to get out of the garage pretty quickly, closing the windows to keep the cat out. I'll weld in three plates then to join the top and the bottom in my next video.